Welcome back. I am here testing my prototype tailwheel suspension. It's something I designed myself. This is the very first time I've come out. I came out here to this lake bed, beautiful lake bed. It's a little wet on most of it, so I wasn't sure if I wanted to land or not, but it actually works. Let me show you. All right, so all the black part is what I designed. This right here is a Tundra Light tailwheel. So beefy. Love it, and it's actually a lockable one. I just don't have it hooked up for that yet. I wasn't sure on what spring rate to get. That's a thousand pound spring, but because it's a cantilever suspension, it's like a three to one ratio, it needs to be stronger. And I knew that, I just didn't have any reference on how much stronger it needed to be. I mean, it, the back only weighs like 70 pounds on the tail, so I thought that that would be enough. But because it's a three to one ratio or close to that, I think, you can correct me if I'm wrong, which I might be, I think it's only like a 330 pound spring now because it's a three to one ratio. At least that's how it works in my head. Either way, it's not strong enough. I have ordered two more replacements to try them out and another third option that's a 2,000 pound spring, but that isn't gonna get here for a whole month. So I wanna try the other ones soon so I can continue to enjoy this. Now, if you missed my last video. So it's just a mountain bike shock right here. I've actually tightened this all the way as tight as I can get. So yes, I have adjusted that and it did help immensely, but it's pretty much at its max now. You can adjust the rebound right here. I flipped it up that way just so it can't get ripped off from stones or sticks or whatever else coming in this way. The nice thing about this is because it's cantilever, it can never actually bottom the shock out. It just hits these little bolts on the inside of this circle right here. That's just cut out so that I can get the bolts in through there. So this is all grade eight hardware, except for these silver ones because they weren't available. And this is all just 60, 61, I think, aluminum, so quarter inch big plates by one and a one and a half right there. Now, if you're wondering why didn't, why did you make it with these two plates right here rather than just making it one piece all milled out? It's because I wanted to be able to adjust it if I needed to, because I wasn't a hundred percent sure that everything was going to be exactly how I wanted it to. So it has about six inches of travel and that's why I designed it with a cantilever is because it gives me so much more movement. Like with the T3 or some other designs out there, from what I can tell with the way it's designed, it's only like a one-to-one -one ratio. So the shock can bottom out a lot more. So with the correct spring rate, the plane should sit like this, but it doesn't, it sits like this. Eventually it will, I hope, but um, it still works and it wasn't, bot it wasn't a hard bottoming out or anything like that. So there's not even a lick of wind today, which is the absolute perfect day to go try it out because I really wasn't sure how everything was gonna work. Let's jet out of here, jump over these mountains right behind me, about 20 minutes, I think. And there's a BLM field out there that I've already scouted out with my wife on a couple videos ago. And we're gonna go check it out there and do some landings out there. So let's get out of here. Fuel selectors are good. Brakes are good. One thing I did notice when I was taxiing around, I don't have like the little springs anymore that I used to. That would like, help assist the tail wheel to move around, which kind of stinks. So it is actually a little bit like, well, it isn't a little bit. It's all braking now. So these brakes are just a standard like one puck Grove brakes. And um, yeah, they're not awesome, to be honest. <laughs> they're okay. They do the job, but uh, I felt like my right one wasn't, or my, I'm sorry, my left one wasn't. They feel the exact same, but when I was going, I felt like I had to put more pressure on the left to get a turn left. I did bring some tools so I can also adjust the tail wheel, um, like the castring part. So we'll see. We'll, I'll give it a go. But all right, we've got twenty or two notches of flaps. We'll set up our trim. I thought I had fixed my trim indicator because it fell off in the back, but it's still not working, so I think the actual indicator itself is not working properly. It's still working fine, though. All right, let's just do a quick ignition test. Even though I just landed and everything was working fine, it's still good. Wow, you can feel like the tail raising up. All right, that's good. Radios, well, there's nobody out here. Transponders set up. We don't have any lights yet. And uh, there's no takeoff clearance. My temps are up. Let's do my quick flow. That's all on. These are all on. We're on both. Our fuel's on. Let's get going. I'm going to see what it's like to add power first. Let's see if I can do this. Oh, 
Uh, it didn't really seem to get off, I guess, quicker that time like it did. It, feel, it felt like uh, at, down at Kingman when I took off out of there. Okay, so where we are going, let's find out the mountains. I need to go that direction because I know it's probably about that direction. I've never been there before with this from here, but... So I wanted to say a big thank you to Wiley, the guy who did the milling of all the aluminum pieces. I had some of them sent out to send cut set for the side plates, but he did all the complicated work for the brackets as well as the tail bar and things. Did a phenomenal job on that, so thank you Wiley for that. Huge, huge help. Um, and thank you for the other people that kind of just, they did some, some people did some stress analysis tests for me with the programs that they have because they paid for them and I'm too cheap to buy one or take the time to learn how. I just figured it'd be so much easier to let somebody else that knows how to do it do all those tests. And because of those, some of those tests, I was actually able to change the design a little bit to make it a little bit stronger. So thank you for everybody that was helpful and give me suggestions on what to do because I'm not an engineer by any means. And this is the first thing I've actually ever designed quite like this before. It's, it's definitely in CAD. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm proud of how it turned out. It, it looks like it's going to work. I think once I get the spring rate adjusted how it needs to be, I, I really think that it honestly needs to be a 2,000 pound spring, but like I said earlier, I, I can't get those for a whole other month, so I'm just going to make do for right now. But it's not going to be any worse than what I had before, right? I mentioned in the last video, I'll probably mention it a few more times over the next couple of months. I've had so many people ask me, are you going back to Papua New Guinea to fly the Kodiak? Yes, I am this summer. I really haven't shared really kind of what we do in missions on this channel because that's not really what this channel is about. It's just about aviation flying and not about missions. That's just what I do. But if you are interested in finding out more exactly what it is that we do, um, you can check out some links down below. I've made some videos for you guys explaining what it is that I actually do for missions and how you could even partner with us because I think there's a, um, a big misconception on bush piloting that we get paid and that we get paid a lot for what we do. Uh, yeah, nah. So um, we actually have to raise up our own support to go do that job. So when most people, I've had probably 200 people or more over the past couple years ask me, oh, I'd love to do what you're doing. You know, how can I do that? Well, yeah, you have to raise support and you have to go into missions and, and all this other stuff. And they're like, oh, yeah, forget that. <laughs> so, if you would like to find out how you could partner with my family to be able to go over there, we actually live off of sponsors from individuals and even churches, but mainly individuals that have a heart for missions, that want to be a part of it. Because I realize that everybody's not... I can necessarily called to go, or that could even maybe physically go, or anything like that. They have just got other things going on in their lives that just doesn't allow them to, but they still want to be a part of it. So, anyways, giving you guys the option, there is some links down below to connect with me personally and ask me some more questions on that. All right, so this place that we're going to, um, I went out here a couple of weeks ago with my wife. We actually went out to Radiator Springs, where they uh, like they have some like uh, the movies Cars. A little museum and the caverns and things like that, but their elevator was broken that day. But on the way back, we did a low flight and checked out this huge field, about five square miles or so, something like that. That would be absolutely perfect for checking out how my tailwheel does on more of an off airport, but still super mediocre. I also have another air strip that I've been to once before that was pretty rough. That's just an old BLM like mining air strip. I went once there with you guys, but I'd love to go back out there and revisit that. My parents are coming in this week, so I might take my dad out there and we'll, we'll go check it out out there. Or something might make a video, I don't know. But but by then, I should have the new shocks to try out. So yeah, the next video after this, I'll probably be going, doing more testing with a different shock than what I have on now, and hopefully it will work more how I wanted it to. Okay, I should probably look at the chart because I actually don't know where I'm going. I just know it was through that valley, so it should be over these mountains up here. Also, another question I know you guys are probably thinking, what are you going to do with your airplane when you go back to Papua New Guinea? Well, that's a hard one to be honest. Like, originally I had in mind that I would just 
buy a kit fox. I'd use it for a year so that I could continue making videos for you guys. Um, it'd give me something to do. And I like projects like the interior and putting on narrow LED lights and the tail wheel and putting on the bush wheels and things like that. Like that's kind of honestly where my hobbies are. And I was originally just gonna sell it and be done with it. But then after I got it, I was like, man, this is like a lot more fun than I was actually thinking it was gonna be. Uh, but then I was like, well, maybe I could just store it for a few years. But then I'm just like, man, but then when I get back, I'm gonna have to do a ton of work to it to be able to basically change out all the hoses and everything like that from just sitting around. Nothing just nothing works well after it's sat around for a long time. Well, gaskets and things like that start leaking. So now I'm thinking I might sell it. I'm not 100% sure. I hate to because I, I like the setup of this plane. I like what I've done. I put different grips. I've done the interior, like I've just said. So um, even like even the avionics, like I would like to upgrade radios and things like that because I, I don't really like these. I don't think they work very good. But I don't know. You guys can leave a suggestion down below. What maybe you guys have? I have a way I could probably store it pretty safely and nicely. Keep it in really good condition. Even a potential being able to have somebody else maybe fly it a little bit every once in a while. So I do have some options, but I don't know. So if I do choose to sell it, I will mention it and let you guys know, because I've actually already had probably three or four people saying, uh, can I buy it if you sell it? Because I know that these things are hard to come by. That there are not that many of them out there. They're a great little airplane for, for the cost and the fun factor is right up there. And that's hard to do these days. You know, these don't work perfect, but they, they do cut out a little bit. I should be wearing sunblock, though. I was going to actually tent all of these. I actually purchased it and everything. Um, it was a tent that actually adheres, that you could peel it off. Um, basically, all I felt like it was is like the, you know those little window stickers you get for like fall and it has leaves, you stick them on your glass. It was, it was like the same kind of material as that, but the clarity wasn't there. So it basically rendered the windows completely in op. Like you, you just couldn't even see through them in a clear enough way that you would feel safe. And I use these all the time when I'm turning. You know, as I'm like turning like this around a corner or through a valley or something like that, it's really nice to be able to see through it. And I could put them on the back, but it, it didn't look that good from the outside. Like, it had all the air bubbles, you know, from like 20-year-old tent kind of look, so this really wasn't what I was looking for, so that's why I opted not to go with that. Just put these in here, even though these are not really the best solution, but they are but they are a solution. All right, 5,500 should get me over top of this mountain ahead of me. That's the Willapai Mountain over there. Then we have a string of it coming down this valley here. It should be actually over this way more, I think. That's the one nice thing about flying in Arizona. All the mountains, well, it's just like Papua New Guinea, like you start to recognize specific mountains and it's a lot easier to navigate without, I have my charts and things, but it's a lot easier to navigate uh, where, as opposed to flying in Oklahoma where there's just flatness and nothing. And I did a lot of flying in Oklahoma. Yep, there it is up there, it looks like. Also, I mentioned this back in like probably November. I really would like to do a get together with you guys. I don't know if I would limit it to my patrons, but then again, I know there's a lot of other people in Arizona, like, so I don't really know. Maybe you guys should leave a suggestion down below. Leaving it only for patrons because these are the supporters of the channel. I know you guys are too because you watch, but um, I would like to meet some of you guys, but I also don't want to make it so big that um, like too many people show up. I can, I can do it at the EAA hangar. They've already given me permission to do it. We could do like a cookout, a lunch, whatever, I don't know, but I think it'd be pretty cool to meet some of you guys because you guys are the ones who have built the channel. I couldn't continue making videos unless people were watching them. I love making videos, but not for nobody to watch. So leave a suggestion down below. I do read your comments. At least I do for like the first couple weeks of the video, but then after that, I just don't have the time. So anyway, I would love to hear your thoughts though. Man, I love Arizona. I know not everybody loves the desert. My daughter hates the desert. She wants to live somewhere super green, rainy, cloudy, wet, cold. <laughs> but I've lived there before. 
and this is better. All right, well, starting here, this is Onyx Off-Road. Starting here, pretty much all the way up to those mountain ranges up there is all BLM land. Oh, well, clearly I can't land up here, but once I get out here, then um, we'll start looking for somewhere. I was talking with somebody this week about flying the Kit Fox and my thoughts on it, and if I liked it more or less than other airplanes I've flown. And my response was, this is by far the most challenging airplane to fly, but it's also the most fun and the most rewarding. Like, when you nail a landing at this, it it's makes you feel a lot better about yourself. <laughs> because a Kit Fox, or I guess even probably a Tailwheel, they can humble you pretty fast. Like, you think you might be able to like do something and then realize that maybe you can't as well as you hoped you would be able to. But I've really actually enjoyed it. I've only, I think I've flown it, let's see. It has 210 hours on it. I bought it with around 140, but this is just engine time. Like it's just, it's just pack time. It's not like an actual airspeed thing. So I don't know, knock off a few hours for just sitting warming up because you know how that is. But so I probably put on like, I put on probably at least 60 hours myself, at least on this thing so far and feeling really comfortable with it now. I wouldn't say as comfortable as I was with the, with the Kodiak, but I still am feeling comfortable in it though. Oh, that's awesome. My screen is not lighting up like it was earlier. There, it came on. But it went off. Okay, let's let's start our way down. Autopilot off. Let's turn that all off. Okay, so this is all BLM land. There's some housing and stuff over here, so we'll stay way out of their way, and we'll just head out here, because I know I've already scouted this whole area out. There's, like, nothing out here. And there's some really good sections that um, that are really flat. And then there's also some small, you know, some small slopes. We got all these little areas right out here that have some small slopes. So I haven't done really any slope landing except for maybe one, and it was like a 4% slope. So I'd actually like to do some slope stuff in this. See how it is a little bit different. Work on my three-point landings because now that I have the tail wheel, it's 5.2 pounds added to the tail. Um, like the difference between the old one and this one. Which I actually can tell a difference. Like you wouldn't think five pounds is that much. And it really isn't, but I still can get the tail down easier. Whereas before, I really, I mean, I was all the way back on the stick and I still couldn't really get a three-point landing very good. Because it, the, the angle was so much. So I guess it's probably about the same. Because the angle of attack, the old one was so much lower, so probably really isn't any different. All right, let's just check my brakes. Let's flip the fuel on. Just go through these again. Those are good. Again, we're we're gonna do like a really soft landing at first, just on the wheels, and then set it down first. That's what I did last time, and just see how it it feels. And if I need to go around, I can just immediately get out of there, as opposed to doing a three point where I'm just going slower and everything else. And then, and then we'll work on maybe some other touch and goes and things like that. All this area looks really nice, so I guess I could probably just start on down and start scoping an area out. The place I was looking at last couple of two weeks ago was over there, and I kind of went somewhere like really long so that I'd have like massive amounts of margin, you know? All right, right here looks really nice. Let's go down and take a look and see. Actually, even all right here looks beautiful. Really low grass. Really smooth. I want to scope an area and then go to the exact same area so that I'm not landing somewhere where I, I mean, there's like a ditch right there, so. Let's get a little bit of flaps in. There's a fence here. I don't want to have any bushes or things like that, or cactuses. I'd really like to be somewhere where there wasn't as much grass, you know, so I could see a little bit easier uh, where I'm going into. I think there was an area up here, I do remember, that had more just kind of like a rocky open. Oh, look at all those deer. Oh, wow. Tons of them. Look at that. Wow, that's so awesome. Never seen that many out here. That is so cool. 
Okay, this is a really nice sloped area right here. So maybe we'll do that later. Oh, that's cool. Last time we saw two of them out here. Okay, this is area is nice because you can see, but there's also some and bushes, bushes and things like that. So, oh, right here maybe. That looks pretty good. Let's turn around and look at that. That might be it. So this is the type of flying that gets people in trouble. Slow and slow, and looking out the window a lot and not paying attention to airspeed control. Or rudder control too, I should say. Okay. Go full flaps. That way I can kind of point my nose down a little bit easier. All right, that area right there looks really nice. All right, let's turn around. Because it's a tiny bit of upslope. That looks the best option yet. We've ended at 65 around these corners here. All right, yep, this is it. All right, that felt really nice. I just kind of wanted to touch, touch and go, see how it felt. Wow, that is so smooth. Oh my goodness. That's insane. <laughs> Have you seen any of my other videos? Like, insane. Let me just jump out real quick and just make sure that it's all good. I'll just leave it running because it's not going to go anywhere. Couple small, tiny little cactuses out there, but other than that, pretty soft. Um, but with that bigger tailwheel, whew, let me catch my breath. <laughs> the bigger tailwheel, the Tundra Light tailwheel, being four inches wide is really going to help. All right, let's go. I really like to land right here. It's a little bit of a slope. It looks really nice. Nothing's on it. No rocks. Let's flip around and do that. That sounds really fun. You just assess it first. I want to be able to make sure I can take off. All the way down this hill. Yeah, it looks nice. All right, well, let's go try that. Hey, hey, that's pretty cool. That was a little bit of a slope. I'm going to shut down, run down there, just make sure I know what I'm getting myself into. One second. Oh my goodness, that was fun. Like, really fun. Like, I haven't really done much backcountry exploring on my own. Like, this is not by any means difficult. Touchdown was probably 6%. Up here at the top, probably 9%. I'm guessing less than 100 foot. Probably less than 100 foot roll. I paced out down about 350 feet or so, about how long I think it's going to take. So I just checked over the plane. All is good. Had some big rocks up here that I didn't see. Was oh, well, I did when I was <laughs> rolling up the hill. But they're off to the side. So let's take off on our first sloped landing in the kit box.
All right, the rock's right over there. I'm only position where I can just go straight ahead. So, let's go. Oh, I got off about 200 feet, maybe 250. Oh, that was fun. And just how smooth that back is, I'm really amazed. Like, I was trying to get the nose up at first, but then I'm like, oh, I'm just gonna let it roll on the back. I'm gonna try that again. Because it just like glided right over top of everything. I was, that's crazy, absolutely crazy. From the top of the hill, there's this fence line out here with a little trail. And that was right where I landed, so I'm gonna do the same now. I'm gonna try to come in a little bit slower this time though. Felt like I kind of floated a little bit more further than I wanted. All right, looks like I can see my tracks. I think. It was just off to the right of that. No, I really can't see where my tracks are. I know, oh, I remember, it was right off to the right of that. That's right. I thought I was a little bit lower than I was when I flared, but clearly it was not. Well, this thing doesn't like to turn. All right, see that fence directly out ahead? That's where I need to land, directly in line with that. I'm gonna go put my DG like I would in Papua New Guinea, exactly where I want to come in. I'm just gonna let the tail just kind of bounce around back there until I get my speed up to push over and see how it handles. Wow, that's so smooth. That was just holding down the ground the whole way. That's, that's really impressive. I, I'm actually really impressed by that. I'm gonna come out here and then really line up with this a lot better this time because I don't need to be in any rush or anything like that. And then make a mistake. Let's go full flaps. Oh, there's the fence, that's the road. That was my problem last time. Okay, here we go, that makes a lot more sense. All right, well, problem number one. It's now sagging a lot lower and it actually hit my rudder on the wheel, which is not good. No damage was done, but I'm wondering why? Did something bend? I, that's really odd that it would go up that much more. Make sure you stay to the end of this video. I've made some changes on the tail wheel already that I think might fix it, so watch to the end. Looking at it, it was sitting about right well, no, see, this is what's making me concerned is I'm touching my stop right here, but it now sags more. Where before it was like right here when I hit the stop, now it's down here. So did I bend this bar right here? Like it doesn't look bent or stressed anywhere, but then again, would I see it? Like I don't see anywhere else that it could be damaged. This is the only place that it could bend is right here and me not see it. I mean, everything else is fine. It did rub on the tire a little bit right here, just kind of scuffed the paint. So I don't know. I really don't know. What I'm gonna do though, rather than taking off down the hill, I'm gonna take off on flat land just so it's smoother on it so I can get up the tail a little bit quicker. And yeah, that's really weird. I have no idea if it's bent. I can't really tell from here. 
either way, thanks for watching this flight with me. I'll let you know if anything happens on my flight back to Kingman. Uh, I don't foresee it happening and I don't, it's, I don't think it's going to damage it just by rubbing a little bit on the tail because it's just barely touching it. Either way though, this is part of the process. I kind of knew that things might happen and that's kind of why I came out to places like this so that if it did, it's just in the middle of a field. Like I was saying earlier, if you are interested more about what we do as missionaries overseas and want to find out more about our ministry, what we believe, see if it's something that lines up with what you do. I know not everybody believes in that. And um, there's some links down below. You can check out um, why I feel led to go to be a missionary and what it is exactly that we do over there because I don't share it on this channel. Thanks for waiting to the end of this video to find out what I'm doing. As you can see, it's a different day and my plane is sitting erect in the back like it's supposed to. And I'll get to that in just a minute. But let me tell you about today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform that has a ton of different classes on a ton of different subjects. For me personally, I've got some goals for myself in 2023 and I'm sure that you do as well. And one of those goals is actually to become a better video editor. I've been editing videos for about 10 years, but really about three years for this channel, but I still have a lot to learn. I took a course on it and within the first 20 minutes, I'm already learning things that I feel like I was gonna speed up my process immensely. But now that we are getting into the new year, this is the perfect time to reinvent yourself and reinvent some of your goals. I don't know if some of those goals might be to become more financially stable, earn some passive income, diversify your income. They actually have courses on that very subject. Or maybe it's to start your own business and become your own boss. They actually have courses on that very thing as well. One of the goals for myself this year is to become better at video marketing. I love making videos, I love making products, I love selling products, as you guys can see from my videos, but I'm terrible at marketing, and I would really like to learn how to do that better, not only on YouTube, but on some other platforms, and they've got some courses for me to be able to take on that as well. So that's some of my goals personally for this year that I'm gonna be using Skillshare to be able to meet some of those goals, and I'd encourage you to, because no goal for 2023 is too big, but a goal without a plan is just a dream. So the first thousand people that click on the link down below are gonna get a free month trial for Skillshare. Thanks Skillshare for sponsoring this video. All right, now let's take a look at this tail wheel and see what I've done and my future plans on how to remedy the fact that um, I might have bent the bar um, and also the spring rate just wasn't enough. So I just picked this up in the mail today. It's an air shock that I can actually adjust by you can see that little red nozzle right there. I can actually put um, like a little compressor on it and air it all the way up so it's kind of an adjustable spring rate. Also, you can see that the plane is actually sitting a little bit more like it was designed to sit. Uh, it's still a tiny bit lower than what I actually wanted it to be, but I've got a 1500 pound spring on there now. I had a thousand pound last time. And as you can see, let me just pull down here. It springs right back up, just me letting go of it it springs right back up pretty nicely. I put quite a bit of preload on it. You can see that this is threaded out all the way to the end. So there's really not much spring left here. And that's why I actually ordered a 2000 pound spring as well. That's on the way in two weeks, it should be here. This should get me by at least until then and keep my rudder safe from hitting the wheel or worse, damaging it. So if you're interested in finding out how this shock performs or the air shock, check out the next video because I'm gonna go check this one out first and then I'm gonna put the air shock on and see if that might be a better fit. So check out the video up here in the corner if you're interested to see how this performs and see if I damage it anymore. Thanks guys, see you next time.